Go, 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 you motherfucker. Tommy, we got captured, dude. Hello, folks. I'm Tommy G, and today we're training with mercenaries. Welcome to Redwater, boys. <laughs> this is why I created Redwater. Uh, I wanted a place for all of us to feel like a family. You know, a lot of veterans, when they get out, and the cops, when they retire, you know, they lose that brotherhood, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to build a brotherhood. Boys, Hey, hey! You like that? Give us the answers that we want! Call your Motherfucker, give us answers now! Let's talk about mercenaries, guns for hire, soldiers of fortune, private military contractors. These are some of the terms for guys that are paramilitary operatives and that if you need hired muscle, our muscle, these are the guys you call. The mercenary world is a deadly one and it's full of gray area. In the last few years, some groups that come to mind when you think of mercenaries are the United States group Blackwater, now defunct, and Russian outfits like the Wagner Group. And these guys have reached all around the globe. Some newsworthy mercenary exploits include the following. In 2007, when a Blackwater convoy was involved in a highly controversial shootout in Iraq in 2021 when Colombian mercenaries were hired by a Miami-based security firm to assassinate Haiti's president, Juvenile Moes. And for the last few years, Wagner Group operated extensively in Libya to disrupt oil flow to European Union countries. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Because of stories like this, it's easy to get a bad taste in your mouth when you hear about mercenaries. But some of these guys do truly brave things and risk their life for the greater good. Today, we cover mercenary group Redwater and their CEO, Joey. These guys do a lot of work with three-letter agencies protecting our border and busting sex trafficking operations. They also provide executive protection to people ranging from presidents to pop stars. This is a place that no YouTube channel has gone before, and we go in deep spending 48 hours with these guys and take you into their life. Everything you are about to see are reenactments done with trained professionals and are for entertainment purposes only. Let's dive in. As you can imagine, these mercenaries have very dangerous jobs. Part of the danger of their job is being on the hit list of groups like cartels, gangs, and motorcycle clubs. For this reason, we have to keep their identity anonymous and we'll be blurring their faces. Two things before we get started in this video. First of all is a thank you. From last week's video, we had a fundraiser for Dr. Scott. Over 1,100 people donated nearly $26,000. That's going to really help her operation. Let's call her and see what she has to say to you guys. Hello. Dr. Scott, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh man, I am so surprised at how good this has gone. Me too. I'm excited because we really needed it. Keep on making moves and we're very happy we got to meet you. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I appreciate you. We'll be in touch, okay? Alrighty. Take All right. care. Take care. Bye-bye. It's just cool that we can come together as a community and do stuff like this for people. So that's very special. Also guys, you should know, new big dogs gotta eat sweatshirts. They've hit the website. They look fresh as hell. Big back prints. And we got them in blue and we got them in black. Boom. The RIP mainstream media sweatshirts sold out in three days. Get these before they're sold out too. And now guys, let's meet the mercenaries. What's up, bro? What's going on, brother? Good to, Good to meet see you, man. man. How you doing, bro? What's, What's up, up, bro? How you hey, doing, Rob. Man? Nice to meet you, Nice bro. to meet nice you. Meet. What are we getting ourselves into today? Oh, you guys have no idea, dude. <laughs> you guys are going to go through some extreme shit. Totally. I hope you guys are ready. You look a bit Middle Eastern. I am Middle Eastern. Oh, thank you out of it. Okay, of so uh, today we're against him, yeah? <laughs> I'm on your team. <laughs> what does it mean to be a mercenary? Mercenary can be to protect people, can be to save people, save kids. What are your rates if I want to like take somebody out? <laughs> You brought your guitar to a gunfight? What do you got there? Let's see. Holy shit. Hey, I'm Joey, ex Army. I was an interpreter. My uh, specialty is PSYOPs and human intel. I'm from Houston, Texas, but I was born in UAE. Hello, how you doing? Uh, my name is Grim born here in the US and I joined the infantry and just kept on shooting my way somewhere but what, I'm here what, now. What's your specialty? I'm a shooter. <laughs> yeah, I kick doors down. <laughs> hey, I'm Spooky. I'm from Florida. I was in the army for five years. I was in a reconnaissance squadron. I specialize in medicine. 
<laughs> I'm Breeze, Navy, Army, 24 years, retired. Been Iraq, Afghanistan, Jordan, Somalia, Pakistan, pretty much everywhere. In Afghanistan, I was a sniper, sniper team leader. I'm 54 years old and I'm from a little town just outside of Dallas. I'm Ghost, I'm from Texas. I specialize in human recovery and executive protection. I served in the Army as well. How's it going? I'm Maverick. I spent about eight years in the Army, infantry, air defense, licensed paramedic, did counter IED ops in Afghanistan, and just about everything in Iraq. For the first exercise of the day, Redwater is running us through an escape and evade situation. I'm part of Team 1. Our job is to get away from the enemy. Team 2's job is to capture us. In the real world, when you get captured, that can lead to interrogation, torture, and death. Here's how it went. Yes. We're trying to escape from enemy forces. Yes. What do we have to be thinking about before we start this? Try and stay alive as long as you can. In a real life situation, we'd be waiting on an evac, so someone to come and pick us up. The goal is to try and survive them, get away from them as long as you can. Let's go, boys. Oh, shit. <laughs> It's all about pacing. If you get tired and they catch you, it's game over. But you still want some energy if you get tired. Exactly. Get tired, huh? Which way should we go? To the right. All right, let's get him. Have you guys ever had to run for your life before? In Mexico, I was contracting for an agency that I'm not gonna name. I was unarmed. I didn't have a rescue team. I was in a little town called Tanola in Guadalajara. It's where the Jalisco cartel operate. And I was in an area similar to this, where the woods are. The cartel thought I was a DEA agent. My job was to stay alive until a vehicle came and picked me up and took me to the airport. And it was very similar to this. But imagine me by myself, unarmed, running in the woods in Mexico. Oh I thought God. I was gonna die, dude. All right, so they're gonna think we're gonna go that way. You always wanna think of how they're gonna think and you wanna do the opposite. What? There's broken vegetation. Somebody walked over that right here too. Considering the area, we're coming in this way. We just need to be cognizant. They could be on the edge of that field trying to flank around. Dude, this reminds me of that Afghanistan. It was very hilly like this. That's why it was so hard for us to survive Afghanistan because the Taliban always had an advantage point on the American soldiers. We'd be in valleys and they'd be up top. They would just f***ing snipe us. Get out of your weapon range, Because as soon as they see you, you start firing. You wanna pick it up? Yeah, we can pick it up a little. Multiple boot prints. You want to go that way and around? I'll go this way and around? Yeah. All right, so right here, this looks fresh, right? Mm -hmm. It just rained, and this is all smudged and f***ed up. Surrender is almost certain death or torture, right? Exactly. So it's better to die fighting than to give up. Thank you. A lot of people end up dead because they don't fight to give in. Okay. Right your weapon. Your weapon. You, you got him? We got yeah. one runner. Oh shit! It's the Mexican. <laughs> Oh, he's over there. There we go. <laughs> Uncaptured. Just like that, all it takes is a couple of seconds. One fing wrong move, and you get caught, and it's game over. So what's going through your head as we're getting yeah. captured right now? So right now in a real life scenario, if you got captured by an enemy, you'd probably would have already pissed your pants. Probably shit your pants as well. Because all you're thinking is you're about to get tortured for hours, possibly days, with no one to come and save you, and you're gonna end up probably dead. What's the most common types of torture that's out there right now? Hanging from your arms yeah. to a pipe, a lot of warding of course, electrocution. How long you hang from a pipe for? Five minutes, sometimes it can go hours, but you start losing circulation in your arms, and it's very, very painful. I've been hung before by my wrist, and it's extremely 
Good painful, dude. Tommy, we got captured, dude. So when you hear talk about torture, you might be wondering what laws and rules govern the behavior of mercenaries. Under international law, torture is undoubtedly illegal. But picture this scenario. You are a mercenary that just busted a man running a sex trafficking operation. This trafficker knows where dozens of kids are being kept, but he refuses to tell you. If torturing this man saves the lives of dozens of kids, is it then ethical? Hmm. By international law, mercenaries, if captured, are not recognized as prisoners of war. What that means is the Geneva Convention that mandates that a prisoner of war is to be treated humanely, allowed to communicate with relatives, and given adequate food and shelter, these measures do not apply to a mercenary. If caught, they are at the mercy of the people who catch them, which means if they fail their mission, they're in no man's land, which makes this a very, very dangerous job. And the more I dug, the more I found a common trend. Governments often hire mercenaries to do the dirty work they find too risky. That way, if the mission fails or something goes wrong, the government that hired the mercenary group can deny responsibility of any wrongdoing. Just recently, this has happened countless times in Ukraine. The Wagner Group has ran risky and deadly operations, and the Russian government is able to say they had nothing to do with it. In this interrogation training exercise, we simulate what would happen if we got captured. I'm sorry. Hey guys, this normally Could works you? in like the hood. I don't know if it'll work with you guys, but you can just let us go. <laughs> is it possible to bribe your way out of these situations, you think? Well, depending on the country that yeah, you're in. Yeah, depending on the country you're Let's in. Let's say you're in the jungles of like, South America. Yeah. Money talks. Haiti, South America, yeah, Africa. Like Everyone here in America looks at bribery as such an evil thing, when really, in third world countries, it's a way yeah, of life. That's the first 24 hours, I would say, of being captured mm -hmm. determines a lot. Keep your mouth shut and walk. The cavalry's coming Stop too. talking, keep walking. Don't give a shit. Stop talking. We would have previous codes before we got captured, right? Sky is blue probably means, hey, in five minutes, let's run for it. When you're interrogating people, what are you looking for? Body language. Yes, behavioral Behavior. cues, inflection changes in the voice, eye movement, eye movement, twitching. When you're talking to someone, if they're looking up and to the left constantly and they're taking lying. a second before they answer, they're, they're accessing lying. the creative portions of their brain, which, which means, means they're, they're making lying. it up. All right, so here's the scenario. Me and Arab are the, the prisoners, and these are the interrogators. What the f is that? It's called a f N26. I call it my shock baby. When people don't want to give me answers, you hold it to specific body parts. They don't want to give answers, you start fucking hitting them with this little bad boy, man, and you'll get answers pretty quickly. Sit in the f***ing shack. F you and f you two. Tell me the f***ing truth. Sit down, Listen up, it's all good, it's all good, it's all- Hey! Hey! You gotta stop f***ing giving us the answers. Yo, we're gonna f***ing start torturing you guys. Don't say shit. In about five f***ing minutes, I'm gonna start f***ing pulling fingers off and drowning you. You start telling us who you f***ing work for, we're gonna start f***ing torturing you guys. Now! Well, we work for ourselves, bro. We work for- I'm not f***ing with you! Give me some f***ing answers we're now! The, we're YouTube journalists. What do you want from us? What do you want to know? Listen, motherfucker. <laughs> you wanna get f***ing no, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Give I know. me some f***ing Answers. Who do you work for? <laughs> I work for YouTube. I swear on my with, life. With all I that water in you. Please do not tase me in the shoulder. <laughs> tell me I now. swear I'm telling you the truth. You're gonna hey, listen, listen, listen we're mother. journalists. You're going to give us answers or what? No, I gave you the answers. I already give us you. answers, motherfucker. I already told you what we know. Call your commander. Motherfucker, give us answers now. In about five seconds, your lungs are going to start collapsing. They're going to fill with water and you're going to start losing your brain. Better talk to hey, us. Hey, hey, hey. Put it on oh, an Give us the fucking answers, motherfucker. You like that? Give us the answers that we want. Give us the fucking answers that we want, motherfucker. Tell us what we want. We're journalists. Please. Bobby, I'm hey. sorry, but I'm a fucking spy. Take him out, Maverick. Put two in his fucking head. Hey, no, I can Bobby. 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 Don't say anything. He's He's done. Next. Tommy, I died next for the cause! Okay. You're gonna be next, motherfucker! And cut. That was not even 1% of what a real scenario would be like, right? No, it would be way more intense. We actually took it very easy on you guys. Me and Maverick are professionals when it comes to this kind of thing, and uh, we knew your limits, so. But in, in a real life situation, it would be way intense, way more crazier. They would definitely give up answers. How fast do people usually break? And in real life, it's uh, actually way different. It depends on the person. The whole goal is, as soon as they enter, they see uh, all the tools and they start giving answers. You want to do as least as possible to them and get the answers. And do they get after you? It all depends. So Arab, I know we barely barely even got a taste of what this is really like, but what was your review of getting waterboarded? Honestly, that shit sucks. In a real life scenario, you would use a gallon at least or a bucket. But you'd use water. a thicker material than a t-shirt yeah, too. A yeah. So like the water towel. retains more. Now we're gonna hit the range, shoot some guns, and learn some tactics. Let's go, baby! Woo!
I was gonna go to the Afghanistan, I pushed you out last minute, but is it actually legitimate that, hey, you could potentially go to Afghanistan and rescue someone? Is that something that you guys would do? Yes, any country. Right now, this is only eight of us. There's a total of 30. There's more too that we don't advertise on the website for legal reasons. The rest of our team right now, most of them are on assignments. How much does that cost? If I get captured in Afghanistan and I wanna hire a team of what, six of you? We'll sit down, we'll talk with them, and then we agree on, on a price. But that's how it usually goes, man. Obviously, we're not gonna charge as much for a little girl than like a politician that we know is bad and he shouldn't have been there but he's still okay. a gasser. That's that's a different story. Okay. You know? It's fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. You're thinking these are like your beginning stages because it's gonna take a few grand just to even get the ball rolling. So an operation could be anywhere between like two hundred to five hundred thousand on average if it's a deep place like big politician it could cost a million. And most of your work now what are the, the majority of your clients look like? Pretty much anybody as long as you're not a criminal or a drug dealer. CEOs, public figures, actors, musicians. Now, but is a good chunk of what you do right now on the border busting traffickers? I can't comment on that. But I can say publicly, I have worked on a contract, was on the Tijuana border. It was affiliated with a three letter agency and we saved 1,500 kids. This was about two summers ago. What the hell is this? The T-1000. I uh, am a dealer for Richmond Tactical, and I'm also a federal firearms dealer, Brazos River Firearms. This is one of our personal models. You're not gonna see another one like this anywhere. This almost looks like a rapper or cartel type shit. How about badass cowboy shit? Badass cowboy shit? <laughs> wow. When your guys are operating, what are some essentials you need to be packing? It varies based on the mission. There's something called covert and overt. On a protection detail, I'm gonna be dressed like my client or like the area I'm in. If I'm if I'm protecting you know, a rapper and everyone around me is wearing hoodies and baggy pants and tennis shoes, that's what I'm gonna be wearing. With the CEO, I'm gonna be wearing a buttoned shirt, you know, nice slacks, good shoes, you know, whatever I can to blend into my environment. If that's more of a covert. In an overt like this, plates are showing, I've got mags. Exposed. You know, it, it all depends. Like, and just recently I went to LA, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and then New York with this client that I work for. Okay. He's a rapper. His father is a very high profile fashion mogul. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought you were going to die? Yeah, I actually, that's why I got the Purple Heart. I got blown up. I got my, my right knee completely blown off. I took a piece of shrapnel into my arm. It cut my bicep, came out the top of my shoulder, and I caught a piece in my head. Where was this? Afghanistan. This is why I created Redwater. Uh, I wanted a place for all of us to feel like a family. You know, a lot of veterans when they get out, cops when they retire, you know, they lose that brotherhood and that's what I wanted. I wanted to build a brotherhood. Do you think mercenaries has a good or bad rap? Movies make mercenaries look bad, I think in my opinion, because they make it look all about yeah. But there's way more than that, man. We all have families. We all have lives. You know, we love, we bleed, and we laugh. You know, as as, as corny as that sounds, but we're human at the end of the day. People in the places you're operating, they also have uh, families and they laugh, right? So from my perspective, it's the same perspective as the guy shooting it. It's either me or him, dude. Whoever acts on it first is the one that stays alive. And this right. is the way it is, man. War isn't fair. Joey said war isn't fair, and he's right. Throughout the ages, people have used mercenaries to try and tip the battlefield into their favor. The earliest evidence of mercenaries being used to help win wars dates back to the times of the Egyptians. When you read through history, you'll read about Swiss, French, English mercenaries sprinkled throughout wars in the Middle Ages fighting for kings and dukes. And in fact, for the United States to gain independence from the British Empire during the Revolutionary War, we had to overcome some 30,000 odd German mercenaries called Hessians that the Brits hired to try and crush us. When I imagine how scary and dangerous it must be to be in war, whether it be with a sword in the Middle Ages or with the high-powered bombs and guns of today, it amazes me that people are willing to become mercenaries. Knowing that if I ever get stuck in a dangerous place, that Redwater would launch a mission to come and get me and might be my only hope for survival, it makes me appreciate that these men are brave enough to do what they do. And folks, remember, like any profession, you have your good and bad people. Whether we talk about priests, doctors, businessmen, or mercenaries, there's good and bad in all professions. Well, shall we get shooting? Let's do it, man. Hey, three cheers for Hillary Clinton. That's how we do it in Texas, baby! Has anyone ever ran out of ammo in a combat situation?
Yeah. Luckily, there was a helicopter that came in and, and took out the targets <laughs> that we were shooting at. We did a raid on a house of a, a high value target. Before we hit the house, we had uh, artillery guys shot up loom rounds because it was like two o'clock in the morning. They shot loom rounds over the house before we hit it. And the shells from the loom rounds, the guy had marijuana fields all around his, his house. Well, the shells landed in the, the marijuana fields and they caught it on fire. After we got him out and got him back and we were waiting to get picked up, we were all sitting by the field and the, all the smoke from the field, we were all like bunched up right behind by where the, all the smoke was coming in. And we got on the radio, we're like, hey, you might want to wake the cooks up, man. We're going to be a little, gonna be a little and hungry. <laughs> How long did it take from when you ran out of ammo till you got rescued? Oh, it was like 10 minutes. Okay, that's nice. So what makes your job worth it? Like what, say, I'm gonna put myself in the line of duty and do something dangerous and be a mercenary. What makes you say you're gonna do that? Protecting other people is something that I've always wanted to do as a child. Uh, family, friends, and all that. So just extending that after my military service and being able to do that as a career is, is fulfilling to me. I think all of us are doing this because we want to help good people. What does this patch mean? Bad people. My message is, you know, yeah, it's cool shooting guns and shit like that, but we need to come together in, in this country. Right now, we're very divided. You're part of the family now, brother, so thank you for coming, Tommy. I can't rescue you if, if you get stuck somewhere bad, but these guys can. We got you. Call us. Contact Redwater. Anywhere, anytime. All is f***ing ready. For this next exercise, we simulate what would happen if I were to get blown up by an IED. Here's how you tackle something like that. There's a sketchy Lebanese guy, he's a known terrorist, just watch out, watch out. We gotta hit this mission, we gotta go. Oh shit! Uh, uh, uh. Medic! I'm not gonna make it! Alright! Fucking leg! Oh, missing leg! Alright. I should probably gonna right. die. So, no, because right now I'm putting this tourniquet oh, on. Putting this tourniquet on for you really quick. This is gonna cut off the blood flow to your entire leg. Well, everything beneath. Three, fifteen. All right, we're gonna mark that so that we can make sure we know when the tourniquet was put on. And now we're gonna finish with the blood sweep. We're gonna check this leg up here. Nothing, then we're gonna check your groin. Oh, God. Nothing, okay, we're gonna check your arm. That has a little bit of blood, let me see. All right, I'm okay. ticklish. So a chest seal is anything that's non-porous. You can use this glove as a chest seal right here. So I'm just gonna slap that over the wound, right? And that's gonna create that pressure inside his chest. That's When the chest goes like this, that means it's paradoxical movement and there's penetration to the chest wall. So you gotta put something on top to keep the pressure the same. So now I'm gonna go into circulation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check his pulse. Make sure he has a pulse. All right, and depending on what type of pulse it is, if it's, you know, strong, if it's weak, thready, if it's fast, it's gonna determine what type of treatments I can give him. Now we're gonna roll into <laughs> our uh, circulation, but I'm gonna hit the uh, IV, get Man. venial access, and then uh, I'm gonna go into my next secondary assessment, which would be, uh, I'd push pain management. Here you go, baby. Put it in his hand, I'm gonna tape it to his hand. If I had someone else, I would have them stand behind or I'd sit him up against some type of object. I could even pick him up like this. He can go dead weight. I can still treat him with whatever I need to do. I can still have access to all this, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull him backwards a little bit and it's gonna rock and that's gonna lock his knees out and that's gonna allow me to stand him up. So watch this, ready? From here, I can transition into any type of hold. I can pick him up, I can move him around. In a real life scenario, that would take so much more time and there would be so much more in depth. Like I would actually have to, you know, like put a chest seal on him and you know, monitor to see if I have to burp it every couple minutes. The tourniquet kind of hurts at first. Yeah, it does, dude. Sorry for the bomb. Why'd you alu akbar, man? I, I, I didn't mean for you to have to go through the pain. I meant to just Thank you. A real trauma lane, it's way more in depth. It's obviously gonna take a lot longer than like five minutes. There's obviously a lot more that goes into it. How did the tourniquet Shit. feel? I hurt. I was looking at you like, no way you have it on too. Like, I, it was almost like an impossible pain. Like, I was like, no, take it off. I was like, no, no, there's no way. The people that say mercenaries are bad guys, get rid of them. What do you say to that? Who are you gonna call when uh, the gang members start taking over your neighborhoods? And the cops are getting defunded already, so just keep keep thinking about that, guys. And they're already overworked. They're already overworked. So who's gonna come and save you all? Right? Yeah. I guarantee you, we have a faster response time than they ever will. Yeah. Yeah. And we understand that there's ethical you know, issues surrounding having private military operating in the continental United States. But that is also where we need to be redefined differently. We're not mm -hmm. running high risk operations like we would in Iraq yeah, right. as a PMC. Yeah. We would be assisting police officers in capacity yeah. of security officers, and not we, combat operations in capacity of soldiers. We love doing what we did with you guys today, training people. So if civilians out there want to come train with Redwater, reach out to our website. We'd love to 
teach a class and travel, you know, throw a class and teach you guys everything. For the last phase of training, we're gonna go out into the town and get a look into what it's like if you're a celebrity or a rock star with executive protection. So let's hit the streets. In this next exercise, we have Arab pretend to be a Saudi Arabian prince visiting America on a business deal. We take him through a crowded food court at a Houston mall and let Redwater show us their skills. Let's see what happens. Today, we're gonna to be protecting our Lebanese prince client. We're gonna show you our protocol when escorting celebrities, CEOs, clients, whenever they come into town, what our protocol is from A to Z. How many men do we have on this case? Three with me and then three that we cannot see. That are blending in. Yes, exactly. And, and that's the that way we usually do it. Because we always want cover if something happens. Okay, so what are we currently looking for right now? Obviously, we're always gonna attract attention to the client. You wanna see people that usually have extra clothing that doesn't fit the climate or the environment, like a heavy jacket or something. Usually, that's a sign that something's off and maybe carrying a weapon or something, especially if the client has a high threat on Do you have a high threat level on you right now, Habibi? I am in Arab in Texas, brother. Everybody around me here thinks I'm probably wearing vests. And you'll notice, you'll notice there's an agent on each side, one behind you, and then one always look to the left. Looking up for anything. Any they tell me in America you have good uh, hamburger. Very good. Can we try good American hamburger? The most excellent hamburgers, Your Majesty. I will be happy to buy you a hamburger. Are you nervous at all right now? No, not nervous. I have good security detail. Top security worldwide. What are you in the mood for right now, sir? Are you are you hungry or would you like to go shopping? I would like to buy maybe a Louis Vuitton purse for my wife. Kifak. And do we have agents on the, the top? Remember I said there's three that are undercover? Because we need guys that have the yes. eagle eye, right? Don't oh. commit haram. Oh, Close your eyes. Brother. Close your eyes. No, but my wife wears this under her hijab. Does she really? Oh, don't you... Don't you dare what? think of my wife like that. Hey, get this guy out of here. We can't have him over here, sir. Get hey, 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 hey. Come on, sir. We got you. And that's exactly how it would happen. Usually with clients, ones that you'd give them one or two warnings, they don't go away. You'd have the second agent behind, grab them and take them away. Prince, sorry for my behavior. I apologize. Good. In food court areas, for some reason, people get attacked a lot because you never know who's sitting down and eating. Are you mostly looking for men or women too? Everything. Usually rival countries will send women. What would you like to eat, sir? I want hamburger, I like American Chick hamburger. Does Chick-fil-A like Chick -fil do it for you, Prince? What is Chick-fil-A? This restaurant is good. Very good. What's your name? My name is Abdullah Muhammad al Salif. Nice to meet you. What's his name? No, in my country we shake. Shake. She, does, she just didn't want to give up her drink. Tough shake, tough shake in my country. Give him a good shake. <laughs> Abdullah Muhammad al Salif. What's your name? Kelsey. Kelsey. Kelsey, it's nice to and meeting you. What are you doing over here? Me, I'm visiting America first time. I'm exploring the culture. They tell me this is number one chicken in America. I believe that. It's true. We need to get you out of here safely. Let's go. Kelsey, nice to meet you, Kelsey. First time I am trying the the chicken sandwich. They tell me number one in America is Chick Fil A. The number one is good. Do you like spicy? Not spicy? Regular? I will try whatever you think is best, but no biggles. American drink? It's a uh, Arnold Palmer. It's a mix of the lemonade and the tea. Arnold Palmer? I am not a Palmer. Nah, no, no, Arnold Palmer. Ah, this He's... is the name of him. Yes. Jason, my brother. Yes, sir. It... Oh, I love America. Everybody in America is like this. Right now we try American Palmer. Oh, America makes very good bomber. America is very famous for fast food. This is the stuff that makes you obese. And we proudly serve it to you as a guest. Because we spent too much time in here, it's probably better to exit the area because we're attracting too much attention. It's a, there's a higher possibility of him being attacked or harassed. So okay. at that point, Habibi. we go move location. Habibi, you're wandering like a lost goat. We must get Habibi, you out of here. there is a beautiful Latina woman behind me. No, no, that's Haram. You have four wives. Let's keep him moving. Habibi, four wives in the middle and east, but in the worldwide i can have as many as i want i'm a brin no that's haram sir let's get you out of here we were getting a lot of stares in the food court and joey received intel that our men were in the mall looking for the prince to take him out so he made the call to extract his client extract the prince and go out let's get out of here would you like a, an american uh, waffle fry oh my god this is delicious Thank you, Habibi. This entrance right now is when people usually get attacked. So at this point, I will advance with the other agent. Look to our left, look to our right. Thank you. Shukran. 
just meeting, getting the contact. How do you think the mission went? Good. I did not notice the three other guys in the mall at all that were shadowing us, did you? I'm not looking for anything. I have my security detail, they do the work. Me, I have make friend with Jason and he give me bomber. We are trying here an American chicken burger. I don't know why they call sandwich, but we will see how it tastes. Oh, wow. Juicy? For the Every food in America is like this. There is so much oil. I think it went great. Got them out securely and safely and efficiently. So it was I mean, a success. It was a pleasure doing your it business. It was a pleasure, brother. Redwater will always be here for you, We sir. shall work Anytime again. you want. We'll take it from here, okay? Hey, Thank you so much. Man. Thank you, Tommy. You're Appreciate it, brother. Good job. Thank you. We'll see yep. you guys. I don't really think we needed those guys. I mean, that, did that really help? I mean... Whoa, 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 whoa. What? No, what? no. Habibi! Habibi! No! Folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. You want to watch another? Here. You want to subscribe? Over here. See you next week.